The Quran itself is supposed to be a miracle, which had listeners fall to their knees whenever they heard it. Although, as with all other kinds of beauty, the beauty of these words is subjective. Just like every new father has the most beautiful baby in the world. Except for me, who actually does. Obviously, the idea that everyone who heard the Quran knew it was from God and fell to their knees in awe is mere folklore. If this had been the case, then Muhammad would have had an immediate massive following in Mecca, certainly enough to remove power from the few who apparently knew the beauty of the Quran but deliberately ignored it so that they could remain in charge of the Kaaba, the place where the pagans kept their stone gods. The Quran itself corroborates that this phenomenon is mere folklore, as it defends itself against accusations from the listeners of being meaningless, vague and mere poetry. The subjective beauty of the Quran lies merely in the way in which the Arabic words have been arranged, and not in their meaning, which is why this so-called miracle doesn't translate successfully to other languages, and why people say to experience the miracle you have to read the Quran in Arabic. This is a typical sign that the Quran is man-made, an entity capable of creating something as objectively amazing as the universe could quite easily make a book with words which are objectively beautiful in all languages. For example, the Quran often talks about men and women guarding their Farj. The mother of Jesus was said to have guarded her Farj, and believing men and women are also told to guard their Farj. The literal translation for the word Farj is Gap or private parts. Chapter 70 verse 29 tells believing men not to be promiscuous with their private parts too. Obviously men were permitted to have sex with someone, so verse 30 continues to say that they don't need to avoid having sex with their wives or their slaves. So there you have it. Treating slaves as concubines is allegedly objectively moral. So much for the beauty of the Quran. Not only is the meaning of the words guard your vagina somewhat unrefined, and not only does the Quran say that a man has permission to have sex with his slaves, it, like Christianity before it, has an unhealthy obsession with Jesus' mother's vagina. As with Christianity, and many other religions, pious women's vaginas are like one-way streets. It is only acceptable for things to come out of them except apparently in the case of Allah. If we look back at chapter 66 verse 12, knowing the literal meaning of the word Farj, it changes the meaning of the verse completely from how apologists translate the Arabic into English. And Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, and we breathed into it, her body, our spirit, now becomes and Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her vagina, and we breathed into it our spirit. Or, if we look to the Quranic commentator Ibn Kathir, it wasn't Allah who directly blew up Maryam's vagina. It seems that Allah may have used the angel Gabriel as some kind of celestial turkey baster. How nice. Jesus was conceived when Allah decided to use his mother's vagina as a blowhole. And thus is the beauty of the Quran.